Okay, so the big issue is, is sodium chloride a molecule or a formula unit? It's a formula unit. So anything that has ionic bonds, uh, we don't call a molecule, we call a formula unit. Okay, um, and so let's just start at the front here. So matter is anything that has matter and takes up space. So in chemistry, we do two things. We either uh, talk about chemical reactions or we talk about uh, chemical techniques where we're uh, separating things out by filtering or distilling. Um, uh, but we also have techniques to help with reactions. Okay, uh, so there's two main things going on there. Um, and there's also physical um, reactions and chemical reactions. Uh, so we'll go into changes of state uh, and various things in further videos. Uh, and so if you have pure substances, you cannot break them down by physical means. You have to use uh, chemical reactions. And so if you have two or more uh, pure substances mixed together, physically mixed together, you have a mixture. And you can either see the mixture such as sand, so you'll see like the little silicon dioxide particles uh, that are little white crystals, you'll see the little black bits, and you'll see lots of other different minerals. Um, even in super pure sand, um, you're still going to see little other bits of mixtures. Uh, another one's bubble tea, I don't know if you know what that is. Uh, it started to become familiar where you can see the milk and you can see the little black pearls uh, if you're drinking bubble tea. Um, and so there's uh, dirt is another standard mixture too. You should be able to see the sand particles, little bits of sticks and organic material, perhaps a few worms, uh, maybe some plants that you've pulled up. So that's a mixture. Uh, maybe not, um, it started to separate out a little. Uh, but if you pull out a piece of uh, piece of soil and mix it up in your hand, and that's a heterogeneous mixture. Uh, homogeneous mixtures are a lot more common. You can't tell because uh, most stuff dissolves in water. So salt water is uh, about 3% from memory, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. 3% sodium chloride, and you can't see that. Uh, but it is, they are still holding their uh, properties. Uh, and so those things are not chemically combined. So something you've probably done in junior science is taken a heterogeneous and homogeneous mixture. So you might have had uh, salt and sand and water and iron filings. So that's both um, you can, so it's heterogeneous and homogeneous at different stages. And you've used, in phys used physical processes uh, to separate them out into pure substances. Uh, so once you've got pure substances, there's two types of pure substances. Uh, I think your syllabus just says know the difference between a pure substance and a mixture. If you go to uh, UPAC and it talks about what is matter, uh, UPAC will, will talk on this level instead and, and say that they're made up of atoms, molecules, and uh, formula units. So what you're going to, what the next step is for a pure substance is, it's either just one element. So an element is something with the same number of protons, uh, but different numbers of neutrons potentially, which is the isotopes down here. Uh, and an atom is just one particle of an element. Uh, and so I'll just we'll say those ones are done. Um, and so a compound is two or more elements joined together. Now, the reason why this is so difficult, uh, number one, you've probably been, a lot of people uh, get taught wrong that sodium chloride uh, ionic and covalent compounds are both called molecules. Um, they're not. Only molecules are only covalent bonds. And molecules can be just an element such as di the diatomic atoms, such as O2, or it can be a compound, which is two or more elements joined together. So a molecule can be both an element or a compound. And then the molecule uh, gets even worse. Those elemental ones are simple. And so they only have weak intermolecular forces. They're, they're gases um, and soft or whatever, low densities. Uh, whereas the lattices, where every single mol particle, such as diamond as well, uh, and silicon dioxide, when they're all joined up, linked together with strong covalent bonds, they're a completely different type, have completely different properties, so high melting points, high densities, and very hard. Uh, and so that's there's a lot of overlap there. Uh, and one thing can be several names. Oxygen is both uh, an element and a molecule, uh, whereas this thing is a molecule and a compound. Uh, and so they can have and this can also be isotopes, or that's unlikely to be two isotopes on the one molecule. Uh, but you can see that there's overlapping. So a particular chemical can have several of these, these titles to it. Uh, and so formula units are strictly the ionic bonds. We're going to show you uh, a little bit later on in a video that uh, there's usually 
chemicals are usually somewhere in between. They have a little bit of ionic, a little bit of covalent to them, uh, but this is just an artificial naming system to make life easier for communication and to work through problems. And so you're just learning these definitions uh, to help with that, with communication. Okay, so formula units are just ionic bonds. Uh, so ionic bonds are basically when a positive and negative are joined together. So that is an atom that's either lost electrons to be positive or has gained electrons to become negative. But we also have covalent compounds that gain a charge uh, and they're called polyatomic ions. Uh, okay, so you can see this is really starting to make life difficult because now this is a covalent compound, but it's it's uh, separated away from that a long time ago over here. But it's a covalent compound uh, such as sulfate, SO4, uh, is a covalent compound that's gained two electrons. So now it's become uh, an ionic uh, polyatomic ion and can form an ionic substance. Uh, so a metal plus a non-metal uh, is now becoming a formula unit. Uh, and it is a ionic substance, it's a salt, uh, so it's a compound. Um, so there's an overview of the terminology. I've, I've had to make this up myself because nothing on the internet accurately grabs all the, all the compounds, all the titles, um, and puts them together correctly. Um, so I would uh, pay a lot of attention to this, make sure you use the correct terms when you're writing your SEs or RIs or your exams. Uh, because if you say that, um, if you use a correct term such as ions and atoms getting mixed up, uh, you may get the question wrong because ions do a particular thing that atoms do not do because they have a charge. And so I've seen uh, those sort of errors in exams. Um, and you're also expected uh, to be able to communicate well. Uh, so you need to know all these terms and how they apply to different chemicals.